Welcome to today's 3D print. We're going to do fans on the CR10 printer to make this thing a lot less noisy. The first thing I did, or one of the first fans I replaced, was that one. You need a 40 millimeter fan. I used this one. It's a 40 by 40 by 10. It's an NV um, ultra quiet fan. For about $10 on Amazon. And I already replaced the other two fans inside the power supply here. Um, you need this size fan for the back, but I didn't have one. So I just put the same size in a shorter depth in the back. So I think that's 40. Yeah, I think it's 40. 40 by 40 by 10. It's supposed to be 40 by 40 by 20. But yeah, I don't care. And then I also replaced the small 50 millimeter fan that sits in the middle here that cools the Melzi board. That now has a silent fan. Uh, one thing you have to be careful with, these um, threading in these holes are absolute garbage. I've already broken a few. So you have to be very gentle. Um, work it left and right as you take it out because they will strip. And what happens is you strip the socket for the hex key. And then you can't get it in or out. So be gentle with that. I am going to pause the video while I do this. Okay, all the screws have been removed, and this bottom plate simply comes off. I have to do it here because I don't want to disconnect all the extruders. I disconnect all the other cables, but these are permanently attached, so you can't remove them. I wish they made these sockets. It would have been nice if this was also a screw-in socket. That would have just made it really convenient to be able to totally disconnect this box. It would also make it convenient to extend the wires. So this just pops off. I'm going to replace those screws with cap screws because they are garbage. Now, the power supply actually just sits in here. It just floats here with these four screws here. So my next step will be to remove those. And the kit comes with all the tools you need to do this. Alrighty, the power supply is unscrewed. So it will now lift out of the printer. You have to stretch it a little bit to get it past this tab over here. Now, the power supply is connected, so you're not going to want to damage it. So just pull it out. And be careful, this wire here in particular is pretty short. So I just flip it over and I lay it on top of the printer like this. This way it gives me access to the inside here. This short one goes to the MOSFET. I might actually make that a little longer just to make it easier to move this thing around, but I'm just not going to mess with it right now. Now, i got to figure out how to show you this. First of all, when you replace this fan, the back fan and the center fan, which I'll show you in more detail in a moment, um, they are hardwired. Well, that one's hardwired. These two technically run to a terminal block, which I'm going to show you. Um, but I just cut the old fans off and spliced in the new fans. You do have to be careful. Um, these are extremely tiny, thin, cheap Chinese wires. There is like almost no wire inside of these. So in attempting to strip the end of the wires, it's like a 50-50 shot. You'll just break the wire and tear the entire thing off. So be very, very gentle when you do this. Or use a very good tool, which I don't have. Let me give you a close-up. Okay, here is the 50 millimeter fan. That is the noise blocker that's in place now. There we go. That's the 50 millimeter fan. It is screwed into the existing mount. So if you remove those two screws right down there, there's one there and there's one there, this entire assembly comes out and you can unscrew the fan and screw the screws through it into the mount to install the new fan, okay? Then back here, see the screws are too long? That's because it was supposed to be a 20 millimeter fan. So I just pushed it all the way on there and I'll probably just get shorter screws for it later. That's the 40 millimeter noise blocker. And the last fan is in the power supply here. You got to take out all these screws on the side here, including one screw here that's underneath this sticker that has the date for the warranty on it. You'll have to destroy that. It's a warranty void. But, you know, we're already voiding the warranty, so what do I care? So these screws here have to come out, and the screws on the other side have to come out, and then the power supply cover comes off. And that is how we will gain access to the inside to change the power supply fan. The one problem I encountered is that my replacement fan is a 60 by 60 by 25 and I don't know if it's a 25 millimeter fan in there or a 10 millimeter fan or I'm hoping that'll fit because that 
fan's pretty noisy. Someone said something about um, you can put a thermistor on that fan to control its speed. I believe that's already in place because that fan does vary its speed based on usage and heat. So if it's hotter, that fan runs more and faster. And when you first turn the machine on, for example, that fan doesn't run at all or it's running at low enough speed that I can't hear it. So I think they already institute some sort of temperature control for that fan. Or maybe there's different versions of this printer. I don't know. So I'm going to pause again while I disassemble the power supply. But first, let's go over it again. There is the 40 by 40 by 10. You should use a 40 by 40 by 20 if you want to keep it the exact same. This is a 50 millimeter by 10 that I use the existing mount for. And as you can see, the cable is spliced in right there. Oh, let me show you the terminal block. Okay. Now, here's the terminal block down there with all the wires going to it. You see the two little red caps right there that I'm bleaching out when I hit it with the light that it turns white? Okay, those are the fans. So, in theory, you could unscrew those last two screws and take that out and replace the wires if you damage them too much. This one, on the other hand, be very careful with because that runs all through this cable all the way to here. So, you really don't want to cut off too much of that cable. So, be careful with that fan there. Also, mine ran backwards. I assume the air should be sucked in and blown into the fan. And mine ran the other way even though I have the polarity correct. So I flipped the fan over, so it's sucking air in over the um, the, um, the heat break. So um, that's it. And only in case anybody wants to see the inside of this, there's the MOSFET for the heat bed. Here is your input power and switch. Your board. Up here is your LCD. I will be carving a hole inside the wall right there so that I can mount another one of these SD card adapters like I did here on my OneHow i3, but I want it up here this time, not down there, because that's a pain in the butt to get to. So that will put my SD card either right here or right here, depending on which side I decide to go with. And I can actually show you that. This is what I use. So this is the micro SD to full size SD. I already tried it, it works fine. Uh, for now, as a temporary solution, I use this one because it will plug into the port and this will sit right on top of the printer. And I just tape it down, so that's my temporary until I have a permanent install. Um, what I'm going to need to do, the light, is I'm going to need to disconnect the four screws. You can see the standoffs right there. All right, there's four of those holding that Melzi board in place. I have to disconnect those, and if it will let me... I think there is enough room, I have to move this entire board all the way up against this wall here, creating a gap on this side, a gap large enough to permit me to insert this internally and bend the cable up so that this will all be sitting in here, and then this will come up here like this and poke through a hole on the front of the printer to give me the SQ. I'm definitely going to do it over here, keep it away from the spin dial. So I'll put it over here like this on the inside, and it'll poke out right there, and then I'll have my built-in full-size SD card slot instead of the stinking micro SD card with its delicate jack. So this will get installed internally. I might need to turn that board if there isn't enough space over here um, to allow me to slide this entire board over far enough to clear this cable bending, but I think it'll be okay. So I'm pretty sure it uses the same board as that one, and this brain box looks about the same size. So there should be enough room. Worst case scenario, I put it in an angle. So I tilt this entire board at 45 degrees, um, or 30 degrees, you know, just enough angle so that I can clear the SD card slot. Um, what I'm probably going to do is get some um, computer standoffs um, with nuts. So put them in, put the nuts on it. Put drops of epoxy on the bottom of the standoffs, put it where I want, and wait until it dries. And then once it's dry, unscrew the nuts, pop the board off, reinforce the standoffs on the casing again with some JB Weld or um, epoxy putty, and then put it back on. This way I'll still have a nice, secure, mounted, melty board. The fan will only be shifting a tiny bit, so I could probably leave the fan right where it is. I probably won't have to move that at all since I'm only going to be moving the board, what, 15 millimeters? Um, so I probably won't have to change that at all. The only catch might be that power input cable there. I think that runs... Oh, yeah, that's the input to the board from here. I wonder, do I need that much power? Well, I'm going to leave it alone anyway. But um, we'll see. We'll see how much I can move that. That is a later upgrade. I don't want to mess with this right now. I don't have the time. 
but that is a planned upgrade to go with the internal SD card the way I do this one. I also plan on putting an additional hole in the back here, probably right about there, so that I can run a USB cable into here with a right angle adapter to plug in so the USB cable will come out the back. So if I ever need to plug in, since I will no longer have access to these once I make that modification, that's okay. I, I don't want this anyway because that's just screaming, break me. I'd rather have just a cable coming out the back and be done with the problem. So there we go. And I will get back to you once I finish opening that. Let's go wide angle here to make it a little easier. Um, quickie update. There are six screws. Remove this. Two on the side, two on the side, two on the end here. And then the only thing holding this on is the fan. The fan is a connector, which I'm going to try to preserve. I like the idea of having a connector there. I might just cut this end, cut that end of the fan, and then I can use the existing connector with the new wire. And it looks like there is, oh yeah, plenty of room. That is a thinner fan, but there is plenty of room in here for a larger fan, so that's okay. It's okay that my fan is thicker. It should fit just fine. Take these two screws out here, and that will allow you to remove the fan. And you can reuse those screws to install the new fan. So let me get back to you in a moment once I'm finished doing that. So you guys can see this. I kept this piece of the cable. It had some shrink wrap on it. So I cut two little pieces off. And after splicing the cable on, I put the shrink wrap over the ends so that they're protected. And then I'm going to slide this over top of it after I shrink these. This way this will not be able to short inside of the 30 amp power supply since that would be bad so more on that and then we install the fan okay in case anybody was unclear it is correct this fan 